Welcome back to Power Lunch. Mercantile Bank has launched a private bank. It uh, focuses on entrepreneurs. The launch happened this morning, and joining us in studio is the chief executive, Carl Cumbia. Uh, Carl, I've had a bit to do with you guys lately, and I must say I like what I see, but it never struck me that Mercantile would be a company that would be moving into the private banking field. Yeah, I mean, we. I think Mercantile is in quite a nice position at the moment. So we, we've got lots of capital, we've got a clean lending book, we've got a lot of liquidity, and we spent a lot of money on a new core banking system yeah, a couple of years ago. So then what we said was, we, yeah, we want to embark on a growth strategy. So, so part of the growth strategy, we bought a rental finance business, and we basically, in the past couple of years, we've grown the lending book from about 30 odd million rand to 500 million rand, so that's going nicely. And then we set up a, what we, like a leveraged finance unit for, you know, for entrepreneurs wanting to buy businesses and structure deals in a different way. And I must say, that thing's taken off really nicely. So in the past year, we've paid out about 850 million rands with a new business there. And then uh, a while ago, when we, you know, when we spoke to you, we had, had a, we had designed a new business center concept for entrepreneurs, totally different to any bank branch you've ever seen. And we started to roll those out now. So we'll have 15 of those around the country you know, over the next, uh, we've got 15 already, but we're going to revamp all our existing ones. And we're building a brand new one in Bedford. But the big issue for us at the moment is to get scale. So it's very difficult for a, a business to move their business from another bank uh, if they don't know you and they haven't built up that, that trust yet. So then we thought to ourselves, well, why don't we look at uh, you know, doing something where you can hook a customer with a product or a service, then offer them great service, and then you know, why wouldn't they bring their business across at a later stage? And then the penny dropped for us, uh, you know, private banking. We thought, okay, private banks, what about individuals? So why don't we go and build the first private bank in the country that's purely for entrepreneurs? Investic might argue that they've gone the same route. You see, they bank high net worth individuals, so whether you, you large corporates, people working for the large corporates, and professionals. So I agree, so there's a, a slight overlap. They've got the professional side, you know, and they've done really well in that space, but we, they don't have business banking, you know, as, uh, as Mercantile does. So we've banked entrepreneurs for 49 years. We understand entrepreneurs, we understand, and I think, understand the risk, and that's why we exclusively for entrepreneurs. So if someone's, as an example, someone from SA Breweries, one of the directors wants to bank with us, that's not our target market. Our target so you market. say no thanks? Yeah, we say no thanks, yeah. We, <laughs> we only banking entrepreneurs. So whether you, yeah, Richard Branson or the hairdresser around the corner, yeah, that's our target market, yeah, because at the end of the day, we want your business to move across to us. What's so different about entrepreneurs to perhaps directors of or as professional managers? Yeah, I think, yeah, the professional managers that are, are being looked after, and if you look at the, the, the big banks, I think they're always happy to look at one side of the balance sheet. So they like to take the wealth piece and invest it in the asset management units and that, but they're not that great on lending you money yeah because and, and if you think of entrepreneurs entrepreneurs yeah they, they obviously want the wealth management piece but they also like to go and buy properties and things like that so you want to be able to offer them a, a solution you know on that side so i think where we we look at an entrepreneur and if they had to go to a big bank for a for a solution you say and they want a home loan is a simple example yeah, they're going to go in there and they're going to say, uh, yeah, the, the bank will push it through the normal home loan channel. They'll, they'll have to have a salary slip. At the end of the day, they don't earn enough you know, through the salary to be able to afford the home loan, but yet their business is generating really good cash flow. So we, because we, we've been doing business banking our whole life, we take a single view of that customer and say, right, you draw this much salary out of the business. You're also generating X amount of cash in your business and your forecasts are looking really good going forward. So we take both of those into account and then we'll lend you money on the, on the back of that. How are your clients feeling right now? We, we're getting mixed messages. In fact, we've got to the latest RMB Business Confidence Index coming out today, mm -hmm. moving into the positive territory for the first time mm -hmm. in ages. We know that in the last few months, many entrepreneurs, particularly mm -hmm. in manufacturing, were struggling. How do your yeah. guys feel? Yeah, I think there's, it's, it's tough out there, very tough. Yeah, and I don't think there's, you know, there's no light at the end of the tunnel yet, so I don't think it's going to turn you know, in the near future. But I mean, entrepreneurs are resilient. Yeah, they, they, and I think if, you know, and if you look at ourselves as our entrepreneurs, we've got really good relations with, our, with all our, our businesses. And yeah, if you've got that good relationship when there's issues, you know, then you can sit around the table and work out what do we need to do to assist you? Because you might be going through a cash flow issue now or a, a bad cycle, but we'll do whatever we can to, to help you get, out, get through that cycle. And most of our businesses, yeah, they've been on the books for many years. They've, uh, yeah, they've gone through a couple of cycles. So if we get to understand how their businesses operate, then it's not that much of an issue, but it's all about the relationship. Yeah? But even Mercantile itself, because there will be many who remember yeah. you as a listed company, yeah. got into difficulties, got huge investments mm. from Kaiser, the, yeah. the Portuguese operation, and now you, you're awash with capital. Yes, I mean, we, those issues were about probably about 14 years ago, and uh, I think it just went through the bank, went a little bit off the rails with, with, yeah, with, with banned lending. So, so it went through a huge restructure in those days. And then Dave Brown, my predecessor, you took over, you, you know, took over the bank about 14 years ago. And from 
yeah, the moment he took over, yeah, the bank returned to profitability within a year. And yeah, we built up a capital base of close to two billion rand now over the last couple of years. So they, so Cash has been a very good shield in that respect, in that they haven't asked for special dividends or anything. They've allowed us to keep the capital so that we can use it as a foundation from which to to grow the bank. Yeah. It's also uh, an interesting management team that you've got around yourself. You ex Standard Bank. Yeah, and there's quite a few Standard Bank, but we also we like to employ from all the banks, so you get a bit of a yeah, a bit of a variety. But I think if you look at our private bank now as an example, yeah, we, when we decided a year ago to build this private bank, we thought to ourselves, yeah, do you go and hire a head on someone out of the, the big banks from a private banking point of view? And, and the answer was no. And the, and the reason why is we don't want to copy what they're doing. Because yeah, you're going to build something from scratch. You'd rather go and build from within. So we actually promoted yeah, Tom Stillwell. Yeah, he was running our product and segment of marketing. We promoted him into that position to say, yeah, build this thing for us. And I must say that the end product's been amazing. We've taken, on day one, we said to ourselves, I think banks are very guilty of designing products and services they think you want as opposed to coming to you and saying hang on well, what do you actually actually want so on day one we set up a meeting with uh, 12 of our customers and we chose male female large business small business and uh, and also old and, and young yeah a really nice mix and we put them in a the room and when we sent the email out we said listen yeah, we, we're thinking of designing a private bank would you help us every one of them accepted immediately yeah, and they arrived and we sat there for probably three or four hours that evening debating what are the big issues you, you know, what do you want out of a private bank? So the guys came back and, the, and the, uh, a couple of issues quite interesting though. The, the first one was paperwork. Entrepreneurs don't like paperwork. You know. They're saying, you know, when I come in here and I want to open something up, open up accounts and that, don't give me paperwork. And, th and then the second one was uh, turnaround times. I mean, you being an entrepreneur, you would know if you want to, you know, you see a deal on the table now, you want to make the most of it. You know. So they see these opportunities all the time, so they need access to cash flow quite quickly. And then from a private banking point of view, they said loyalty, you know, a lot of the loyalty schemes, you're actually never able to redeem your loyalty mm -hmm. points. So give us something that we can actually use every day. And then a lot of them travel, so they want lounge access at the airport. So, so, so those are your four like, big themes that came through. And the, the way we've designed the private bank now, it addresses you know, all of those. I'll give you an example. Tell us about the lounge access, because I'm sure there are a few people thinking, hmm. <laughs> okay, so does that mean Bidvest Lounge or bid Slow Lounge? lounge or, no, it's Bidvest or, Lounge, mm -hmm. the, the Premier Lounge. And if you've got our black credit card now, you'll go in there and you've got access to, to the lounge, basically. Right? So at least when you travel, you're feeling a bit more comfortable because entrepreneurs travel quite a bit. But I think the, the, what's quite nice is the, the seamless account opening process. So, I mean, I was our first private banking customer. I signed up a few weeks ago. And literally, uh, someone sat with me in front with an iPad. We captured all my details on the iPad. Yeah, it took 10 minutes. I signed on the iPad and I was given my credit card an hour later and it worked. You, know, you could draw money out of the ATM. So no paperwork. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Having been a, a client at private banks for many, many years, the key issue, though, is the person who looks after you. Mm. Um, quite often, one finds that that person gets promoted and mm. moved around. How are yeah. you going to overcome that issue? Yeah, I must say, because we uh, at Mercantile, uh, if you look at the business banking side, our relation managers, our, turner, uh, yeah, our staff turnover rate is very low. If you look at the, we actually gave our stats the other day to our staff. The industry average is about 18%. We're sitting on 8%. And our relationship managers hardly ever churn. Yeah, so we, mm -hmm. they, they stay with us for a long time. So at least you build that, you know, that, that, that relationship with the customer and they, you get to know their business and, they, and they, they get to know their relationship manager. The relationship manager on the private banking side, we've hired people, really good experienced people, but with business banking experience. They have to have business banking experience. So they get to understand your business. And what's going to happen now is you know, we're very good from working up point of view at lending money to entrepreneurs. And we've got all the products and services the big bank offers, but we don't have the wealth piece. So we've, um, we've entered a joint venture with Citadel and Peregrine. Yeah, Citadel's probably got 30 odd billion rands worth of assets under management. And they've got a really good brand and they're yeah, always up there winning awards and that. So they are wealth partners. So when we come and sign you up, we'll, bring, uh, we'll ask you, would you like to someone to come to chat to you about your wealth management? And then we'll bring a, a wealth manager from Citadel and they'll come and sit with you and uh, yeah, talk to you about your, your needs. Well, it just shows how things change. <laughs> Carl Cumbia is the chief executive of Mercantile Banker, previously listed on the JSE, was uh, then delisted, lots of capital, and it's being correctly applied, as you heard in that discussion. Another entrant into the private banking field, but this time focusing on entrepreneurs.